Hi, scholars. Uh, we are ready to start reading chapter six, which is about reptiles. You can see in the photograph on this, there are reptiles. And um, remember to follow along as I read. If you lose your place, you can just pause that video so that you can go refine your spot and then continue reading along with me. Um, so we're ready to get started. Chapter six, reptiles. Hi again, it's Rattenborough. You have already learned a little about today's group of animals, which are reptiles. You already know that reptiles are cold-blooded animals and vertebrates. But did you know that reptiles live both on land and in water like amphibians? Reptiles have lungs from the time they are born, not gills like amphibians. You may also already know that reptiles lay eggs. Some reptiles have soft shells and some have hard shells. They lay their eggs on land. A few snakes hold their eggs inside their bodies until they hatch. Very few rare reptiles do give birth to live young, never making real eggs. Many different groups of animals are classified as reptiles. These include animals such as crocodiles, alligators, turtles, tortoises, snakes, and lizards. All right, and over here in the photograph, the caption underneath says, crocodiles, turtles, snakes, and lizards are all reptiles. All right, there's our introduction. We're going to get out our paper and a pencil to make our glossary for this chapter. Some of these words you may know and be more familiar with, but we want to make sure that we're practicing writing and spelling them so that when it's time to read them, it's easy work for us and we're not confused. So this first word is poisonous. I'm going to write down P O I S O N, that's the word poison, and then I'm going to add the suffix O U S. Poisonous. I see that P is a consonant, O and I are vowels. When they're together, they make one sound, oi. And I see a consonant S, a vowel O, I can underline, an N consonant, and then another vowel pair, O U is underlined. So even though there are one, two, three, four, five vowels in this word, there are only three vowel sounds. So there are three syllables. Poisonous. All right, and poisonous, the definition I'm going to write in the column, just like I've been doing for my other chapters, means full of poison or venom. And, hmm, what is something poisonous that I could draw? Let's see, I think I'm going to draw a snake since I know we're talking about reptiles. Not all snakes are poisonous if they bite you, but some might be. So that can be my little example to remember. All right, our next word, I can draw a line underneath to start the new row, is deadliest. E-E-A-D-L-I-E-S-T. Let me find the vowels. D is a consonant. E and A are vowels. Paired together, they make one sound. In this word, it is E. D is a consonant. L is a consonant. I is a vowel. E is a vowel. S and T are consonants. Deadliest. So even though here I have one, two, three, four vowels, there are only three vowel sounds. The E eh from E-A in dead, li, that I is making a long E sound, and est, that E is making a short E sound, deadliest. And deadliest means most likely to cause death. So more likely than other things, the deadliest thing is the most likely. Um, I'm going to wait on that one for a picture. Maybe we can find some more information about the deadliest animal or reptile that we talk about today. The next word is inject. I N J E C. T, I is a vowel, N is a consonant, J is a consonant, 
E is a vowel, D is a consonant, T is another consonant. So I have one, two vowels, and two vowel sounds. Inject. Inject means to force in fluid. Like poison. Usually by piercing the skin. If you go to the doctor and you need a shot, they inject that shot using um, a needle. They force the liquid, the fluid, into your into um, your body by piercing the skin by poking it through the skin. So I'm going to put for inject. I'm going to draw a little picture of like a little shot, like the doctor would give. Right, and when you're, you can pause if you need to catch up. Moving on to our next word is venom. V E N O M. V is a consonant. E is a vowel. N is a consonant. O is a vowel. M is another consonant. Venom. Two vowel sounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Two syllables. And venom is poison produced by an animal. used to harm or kill another animal. So maybe this is so that predators do not try to attack the animal that has venom. It's poison produced by an animal used to harm or kill other animals. So let's wait on our picture for that one as well. Um, and then we can come back to that later when we have more information about which reptiles are venomous. They have venom inside of them. Okay, this is two words, but together they describe one thing, water, which is a common word. And then the next word is moccasin, M-O-C-C-A-S-I-N. So water has two vowel sounds, the A and the E, and then moccasin, M is a consonant, O is a vowel, C is a consonant, it's doubled here, A is a vowel, S is a consonant, I is a vowel, N is a consonant. So moccasin has three vowel sounds. Altogether though, when we use both of these words, there are five syllables. So a water moccasin, hmm. A water moccasin is a type of poisonous snake. Found in the southern United States. That's where we live. So if you have more than one water moccasin, you would add an S suffix on the end to make it water moccasins. Plural. The next word, oh, and you can draw a little picture of maybe a snake in the water for water moccasin. Let me go on. There's my little illustration, my sketch to help me remember. This next word is startle. S T A R T L E. Startle. That A is controlled by the R and it says R together. And then L and E together say O. That's our suffix O. Startle. That's two syllables. Startle just means to surprise. And um, if it's already happened, we add a suffix ED to show that you have been startled. So if I am working really hard and someone walks up behind me and starts talking and it makes me jump, I can say, oh, you startled me. So for my little picture, hmm, let's just put a little, like an emoji face of surprise. All right, 
another line for another word. This word is molt. M-O-L-T. Only one syllable in molt. That long O sound. Molt means to shed skin. And if you are doing it right now, or if the animal is doing it right now, it is molting. Bad suffix ing. If it is already done, it has molted. Ed at the end. So that tells us molt is a verb. It's an action word. All right, and that is it. Those were our words. Pause if you need to catch up. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new words that we can look for as we read today. We know the meaning now. So we're more familiar as we read. Some people may think reptiles, mainly snakes, are scary. Most reptiles will not harm people, but there are some reptiles that you should try to avoid. The black mamba is the best example. This is the longest and most poisonous snake in Africa. It is also the deadliest snake in the world. A mamba injects venom whenever it bites something. A mamba bite can kill any animal even a human, in less than 20 minutes. And here's a photograph over on the side. The caption tells us that it is a poisonous black mamba snake. So if you are ever on the continent of Africa, you need to make sure to avoid those snakes. Rattlesnakes, copperheads, and water moccasins are types of poisonous snakes found in the United States. Rattlesnakes, or rattlers, are easy to spot because they have rattles that shake on their tails. You know when there is one nearby because you can hear the rattles shaking. Copperheads have a triangle-shaped head and dark stripes. They are normally less than three feet long. They prefer to live in rocky, wooded areas. They only bite humans if they are attacked or startled. Water moccasins live in the water, so they are hard to spot. They have a dangerous bite, but rarely attack humans. If you live in a southern state like Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana, you are more likely to see one. They live in swamps or shallow lakes. You might want to avoid swimming in shallow waters if you live in those states. You know, even in Texas, if you see a lot of grass growing in the water, you might want to stay away from them if you see there's snakes living inside. So here there are some labels on each picture. Here's a rattlesnake a copperhead, and a water moccasin. Some people think snakes are slimy because their skin looks shiny, but most reptiles have thick, dry, scaly skin. Reptiles are known for molting or shedding their skin. Reptiles shed their skin several times during their lives. Snakes, for example, shed their skin in one big piece. They do this when they grow too big for their current skin. Over here in the photographs, we can see a snake is molting here. And it says the snake skin has been left behind by a large snake after it molted. So I've even found um, molted snake skins left in um, my yard sometimes. You can find those if you're out hiking or maybe even in your yard. The biggest reptile in the salt is the saltwater crocodile which lives mainly in Australia and a few parts of India and Asia. Male saltwater crocodiles can grow to be 20 feet long or more. Attacks on humans are rare. If they do attack a human, it's usually not a happy ending. Crocodiles have the most powerful bite in the entire animal kingdom. Their bites are 10 times stronger than that of a great white shark. Despite their power, when they bite and snap their jaws shut, it is fairly easy to hold a crocodile's mouth closed. They open their mouths using a weak set of muscles. In fact, a third grader may be able to hold a crocodile's jaw shut. Would you like to try? I think I, I will pass on that. I would not like to try that. All right, these are also in another picture that I've added to the Google form. If you are having some trouble um, submitting your answers, you can just email me and we can talk through that. But I've also added a video on our Google Classroom to show you how you can turn in your work. So these are the questions for um, chapter six. The first one says, give three details about reptile eggs. Number two, name animals that are classified as reptiles. Number three, 
what are three types of poisonous snakes found in the United States? Which type is easy to identify? Why? Three questions on number three. Number four, what happens to the skin of reptiles? So we may be able to use our glossary to answer some of those. If you need to go find text evidence, you can just pause the video and go back to the spot where um, you can reread what I read to you all by yourself to find the answers. All right, that's all for chapter six. I'll see you for chapter seven.